you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to configure an IoT access point to connect to a Ruckus IoT controller. If you log into our virtual Ruckus IoT controller, we see on the dashboard that we have no APs. If we go to the IoT tab, you'll see also that we have no APs listed here. But if I go over to my virtual smart zone, you'll see in this case, we have three APs. We have an R510, an R650, and an H510. So why is the AP not showing up in the Ruckus IoT controller? The reason is I don't have a DHCP option 43 on my network. Normally in an enterprise network, you would have this configured and it will give the IoT controller the information to onboard the AP. So let's talk a little about the IoT access point discovery process. IoT APs are not manually added. They can only be auto discovered using DHCP server option 43 or by configuring the Ruckus CLI on the IoT access point to discover the Ruckus IoT controller with specific commands. The virtual smart zone holds the IoT AP firmware and it's necessary to make sure an IoT access point connects to the virtual smart zone and downloads appropriate IoT firmware. To do this, the IoT AP needs to know the virtual smart zone's primary controller address. If no DHCP server option 43 is present, the IoT AP will need to be manually configured with the virtual smart zone's primary address. This can be done manually by configuring the IoT AP offline using the IoT AP's GUI interface. Or if you know the IP address of the IoT AP, you can launch an SSH tool such as PuTTY and use the set SCG IP address and then doing a set SCG reset. This will point the AP to the virtual smart zone. Now let's look at the IoT AP discovery process for the IoT controller. The process is similar. IoT access point will normally discover the Ruckus IoT controller by using option 43 to discover the virtual smart zone with the following sub options. Sub option 21 is used to configure Ruckus IoT controller IP version 4 addresses or FQDN which is mandatory. Suboption 22 is used to set the control VLAN for IoT control or data traffic, and this is optional. As part of an IoT AP's boot up process, it checks for option 43 and then suboption 21 and 22. Once the application receives this information, it uses the information to connect to the Ruckus IoT controller over the public subscribe server or PubServe channel. As a note, configuring a Windows or Linux DHCP server to set up option 43 is out of the scope of this demonstration, but we do have other training courses that cover this. If the DHCP server option 43 is not present in the network, which is the case that I'm demonstrating here, the IoT AP will need to be manually configured to discover the IoT's controller. To do this, the administrator will log into the IoT AP and use the Ruckus CLI to give the AP the following commands to discover the IoT controller. And the commands are set IoTG MQTT broker IP, which is the Ruckus IoT controller IP address, and then set IoTG MQTT SSL space 1. In this example, since we're not set up with a DHCP server with option 43 enabled and sub option 21 with the IoT controller's IP address, we are going to manually configure the IoT AP to discover the IoT controller services by giving it the IP address of the IoT controller. And as you can see up here, that address is 192.168.8.80. So that's the address that I have to set. So I'm going to launch a PuTTY session and put in the address of the AP. So I'll put in the IP address of the R10, which is 192.168.8.135. And I'll go ahead and open it. And then I'm going to log in. And that brings me to the Ruckus CLI. So now I'm going to put in that command. So I'll put in the command set IOTG dash MQTT broker IP and the IP address of the controller which is 192.168.8.80. Hit return. And it'll help if I type it right. That says OK. And, and then next I'm going to type set IOTG dash MQTT dash SSL space 1 and hit return. And that should be all I have to do. So I'll go ahead and close out this window. And here you can see that we now have an AP that has showed up in our IoT controller dashboard. The orange shows that it's unapproved, so I have to approve that. So if I go to my IoT APs tab, I'll click on that. I'll click on the AP. It'll bring up this window on the side. 
and I can do an IoT AP approve. I'm going to turn that on and I'm going to hit apply and it says the operation was successful. So now we've successfully installed our IoT AP and as you can see the green implies that it's online. It also shows for example that the IoT AP by protocol so it shows that Zigbee is enabled on this device. So if I went back to my IoT APs you notice that the protocol is Zigbee. If I click on that and I scroll down and it gives me my radio information. It says that the mode is Zigbee. And if I wanted to, I could select Zigbee BLE or Zigbee AA, which stands for Asa Obloid. So this concludes our demo on how to install an IoT AP using the Ruckus Virtual IoT Controller. At this point, we are now ready to begin configuring our IoT endpoints, which we will cover in other videos. Music